Our collective histories are often captured on film, video, audio, or digital formats, and through these, we engage to learn about the past and to share our own histories with future generations. Today, we join other countries in observance of World Day for Audiovisual Heritage under the theme, Engage the Past Through Sound and Images. Welcome to Jamaica Magazine. I am Theodore Henry. Stay tuned. Water is precious. So we encourage everyone to practice the four R's of water conservation. Always remember to reduce your use of water wherever possible. Replace water wasting devices with water savings devices. Reuse water wherever possible. And wherever leaks are found, please repair them and repair them quickly. Don't delay. Practice the four R's of water conservation today. Music is an important part of our history, and it's through music that many of our stories have been told. Today we take you on a musical journey into the world of reggae. From deep within the archives, on reels no longer supported by the platforms of a technological modernization in the transmission of sounds and images, comes the story of a people and their relationship with the music they have bred. If you're in a Babylon, reggae! Reggae! Reggae music is vast, brother. Yes, sir. Reggae music is roots. Not dangerous. Yes, sir. It's our kind of music that bread uh, What me say? If reggae can ever be edged to a set place, then 13 Brentford Road is its home. It was here at Studio One in 1968 that Rocksteady briefly went back 20 years, married the folk rhythms of Mento, and gave birth to reggae. The new art form experienced its share of birthing pains as the so-called elites of society struggled to accept its revolutionary presence, while those from whose experiences it sprung cleaved onto this evolution in expression. Reggae music is something that I think most of our people are ashamed of. I don't know why this should be, because it is coming from our roots. So much people are naked like them shame. I agree. Truly. Sure, them just shame what truly belongs to them. What me say? I thought we still some time, do I? Truly. Well, I think that the rhythm is very good, and we like it a lot in Jamaica here. Yeah. As myself coming from New York, I only thought that I would dig soul music, just, you know, funky music. But as I hear the reggae scene, reggae music, I like it. I like reggae music very much because, right, it shows a lot of culture, right? It tells from the plantation days, the type of music that people used to sing, right? And it sort of prevail what really was going on in that time, right? Up till now, right? It's something you can't just sit down and listen to. You have, you know, you get the feeling to move. Reggae music is our high style music. See me like how soul music belongs to see as reggae music belongs to Jay. Yeah, yeah. My favorite that is a pop Marley and the Wailers. Probably because it's it's part of me, you know, and we create it. I don't know, but I think I enjoy playing reggae very much. I really dig reggae music, but whenever I say I hear reggae music, um, I feel like dancing. Yeah. I'm in a dancing mood. Generations later, and the narrative retains echoes of past sentiments with the addition of new layers. Reggae changer. I can't say like it changer a bit, you know, but still, reggae beat. The old one is better, the new one, not much to me. Mm -hmm. I just love the old stuff. When I'm working, I listen to my music. Keep me going. You know? Hey, me go dance and them music that I'm playing. Me not really stay there. It means everything. It's a part of Jamaican's history. So, it defines what, who we are as Jamaicans. It means everything. It means love. It means peace. It means understanding. Reggae is a lifestyle. 
know there's a lifestyle, you know, Jamaican lifestyle. Yeah, even the lifestyle of your life, because even didn't tell you any form, you know. So you work hard every day, hustle hard every day, and music says, so okay. So, reggae is life, man, you know. Reggae has become what some prophesied, a few decried, and almost none could truly imagine. Reggae is no longer seen in the world as alternative music or third world music or um, new wave music. It's doing good, I think there are a lot of guys who make a lot of money from it, but it is good. I think maybe probably next to tourism. People know Jamaica not only for our sand, sun and beach, but they know us for our music. So when you go abroad and people be like, you're, oh, you're from Jamaica, you know Bob Marley, you know such and such, all because of our music. So reggae is our definition of Jamaica. It is the strongest component in the brand Jamaica Construct. Reggae artists and those who specialize in its offshoot dance hall have won major musical awards. In life and past death, its greatest ambassador retains an undeniable international presence that has demanded respect from world-renowned publications. Since 2009, the entire month of February has been dedicated to its celebration at home. It was instrumental in garnering Capital Kingston the designation by UNESCO as a creative city of music. And in 2017, the Jamaican government submitted a nomination dossier to have reggae inscribed on UNESCO's representative list of intangible cultural heritage for humanity. This international protection instrument will ensure that the origins of reggae and its de derivatives are appropriately documented and safeguarded for present and future generations. It is fascinating to reminisce on the early days when Jamaican music struggled to germinate and the pioneers were classified in some cases as undesirables right here at home. But even then, in its infancy. Well, I think that reggae is a good music here to stay. And I think reggae music belongs to us, and we are to show it, right? And now. Reggae is hot commodity, and the world has embraced it. But we are proud to declare that we still own it. Respect must be given whenever respect is due. One more time, let's give it up for Jamaica and reggae music. <laughs> Minds think they are cunning, the major organized crime and anti corruption agency have them running. Your friend has shown, come, sir. Yeah. Take time running, are we ready for the ops? Drive up for your block, step out, now we block, so I'm gonna take about your laptop. Pull up every lock, no evidence of drop. We put it in a cuff, so now we have the underground. Sing your system, you better look out for it. When you move, corrupt, better look out for it. They say you get wet, look out for it. Look out for it. Look out for it. From your system, you better look out for it. When you move, corrupt, better look out for it. They say you get wet, look out for it. Look out for it. Look out for it. The proceeding was brought to you by MOCA, the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency with the kind support of NIA and USAID. MOCA! MOCA! We know about Bob Marley and his influence on society with his music. In Trenchtown is where he recorded hit songs and created many musical memories. Today, the Trenchtown Culture Yard is a designated heritage site. I feel like I'm giving away too much information at this point, so just watch this. Some call it the Hollywood of Jamaica, while others refer to it as the cradle of Jamaica's music. This place is packed with history, and lucky for you, we will be exploring some of it today. This culture is a museum, you know, and it's a history of Trenchtown. It has a whole lot of legacy in it. Yes. The Culture Yard, which is situated at Lower First Street in Trenchtown, is one of the many houses built by the Central Housing Authority between 1940 and 1949. These government houses were built on 200 acres of land 
and subdivided to facilitate a residential community to be called Trenchtown. Trenchtown itself, it was named after a person, and the name of that person is Daniel Power Trench. Daniel was born in Jamaica. His mother was Jamaican, but his father was an Irishman. So Daniel's father came to the Caribbean, basically, to the business, and he met this woman. They got married and had 14 children, and there comes Daniel. Greenwich Park Estate Land, that was the name of the estate that was owned by Mr. Trench. And what had happened was, before Daniel died, you know, he was born in 1813, he died in 1884, he actually left that land, the estate land, to last his family at least 99 years. And what had happened was, there was a huge earthquake in 1907 that had destroyed the estate land beyond repair. So later on, the, the land became a squatter settlement. You had persons who, were, who started to squat on the land, and afterwards now you find where the government came in and had asked the family, to sell the land to them. So it was sold to the government and that's when the government now divide the land in different areas. On the land, the government built four different blocks of houses, namely H, S, T and U block. On the U block is the Trenchtown Culture Yard. People travel from near and far to learn about the phenomenal history of Trenchtown and the successful people and musical bands it has produced, such as the Heptones, Abyssinians and the Whalers. Within these walls, visitors also get to observe furnishing and instruments used by the musical icons who once lived here, including the great Bob Marley and his mentor and co-writer, Vincent Tata Ford. So Vincent Ford, this is all his writings on the wall. This is him, this is his furniture, this is his Bible. It was in this space that the popular Bob Marley hit no Woman No Cry was penned. In this song, listeners are able to get a feel of some of his experiences while living here. His first vehicle of what he wants, his first acoustic guitar, the single bed of what he sings about also is there. And there are many bits and pieces of Bob that is still here. It's emotional. After an emotional tour of the rooms and galleries, visitors get the chance to wander the courtyard where they will find this fascinating statue of Bob. And this captivating mural of the culture tour. But the tour of the culture museum and yard is just one of three tours available to visitors. So normally we offer three different tours. The tour one is just inside the culture yard itself. You get a guided tour with one of our tour guides and it's just a tour inside of the galleries. We offer a second tour. That tour takes you to where Bob Marley mom lived when she came here in 1956 and Bob was only 11. So that house is basically not just Bob Marley's mother's house. It is also where Bonnie Wheeler lived. Because you know, Bonnie Whale and Bob Marley, they were stepbrothers and they share the same home. We also have different craft shops in the area where some old persons can make their own money. So the guides would walk with you there. There's also Trenchtown Ceramics, where the persons they make um, ceramics out of our own Trenchtown clay. And at the end of that, it stops at the recording studio that we have in Trenchtown called the Jamming Studio. So there you know, persons know the guests get an experience of how the rhythms are made. It's evident that the Culture Yard is a must-see for anyone who wants to learn more about Bob, Jamaican music, and the phenomenal evolution of Trenchtown. It's no wonder the site was declared Jamaica's first inner-city heritage site. The venue opens every day, 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Mondays to Saturdays, and 10.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Sundays. To arrange your visit or guided tour, all you have to do is contact tour manager Sophia Dow at 876-859-6741. Trust me, you don't want to miss out on this rich cultural experience. Motorists. 
When driving on the road, here are some simple reminders. Look out for and extend courtesy to all road users. Give plenty of room to pedestrians, especially in wet weather. Drive slowly. No bother wet them up. Slow down when approaching a pedestrian crossing or school and always be prepared to stop. Remember, a school zone is a 30 kilometer zone. Cut your speed. Drivers of large and slow moving vehicles should always keep in the far left hand of a dual carriageway. Keep it simple. Drive left and pass right. These are just simple reminders of your road duties. Drive safely. Over the years, the JIS has captured so much of Jamaica's history through the use of photos, videos, audio, and even print. It is your go-to place for all things Jamaican, especially historical places of interest, to visit across the island. It's one of the oldest parishes in the island that might have been originally named after Thomas Hickman Lord Windsor, the then governor of Jamaica in 1662. Seated in a right angle, bordered by the spellbinding St. Andrew on the west, the picturesque Portland on the north, and then gently washed by the waves of the Sea Caribbean Sea. Bienvenido a St. Thomas. Welcome to St. Thomas. Full we play. St. Thomas, we're there. St. Thomas, we're there now. Welcome to St. Thomas. However you put it, we're there, St. Thomas. Join us on this travelogue. We'll be moving throughout the creases and corners of this beauty, turning the pages of our local history book in which you will see the Old Borden Wharf, Judgment Cliff, Roselle Waterfall, and other places. The cliff high above the Landaway community in St. Thomas at first glimpse appears to be just like any other overlook in the parish. But take a second look and you'll notice that a section of it is completely gone. Known as Judgment Cliff, it got its name from a story of how an entire community was wiped out during the 1692 earthquake. It's a story that passed through generations in the community and one that residents readily recount to passerbys like myself. Judgment Cliff, I was informed that they used to have a plantation up there run by a serious, wicked and slave master import jacoon and measures and the farmers and one of the reasons why they, they resided on the cliff that in, in, in case the slave wanted to run away, they would have difficulty in doing so. The place collapsed. I guess during the same time, Port Royal earthquake was taking place. That was 1692. It was a plantation to people who lived there too. Everybody get covered out. Then say, when it happened, it's at night. Is the, they say a man, a rooster, and a bull seal. The man gone out down wild. The rooster fly off of the roost. The bull broke down the pen, gone out. Gone wild, same like the man. We're still set on traveling this allure blessed indeed by the events of history. Right now, we're headed to a gem up the road on the corner. Tumbling over the rocks onto the roadside is an area known for its pristine waterfalls and fishes. The Roselle waterfall is used for bathing and even for washing by residents or those passing by. It was once a busy area for commerce and entertainment prior to Hurricane Dean in 2007. But despite that, residents still enjoy the untouched water and how it seemingly removes all pains and ills. 
And from that water that falls, our next stop is a spot where the residents fish. This fishing area near Lethal Beach, right? When the weather good, we go to sea and fish. When it's bad, we have to stay on the land. Well, we're doing this about some, some 50 years now, and we do it for a living. So I maintain my family. We have to prepare the net, we buy the net ready mix, and we put it on the fittings towards it. We put on the lid and the cork and so on. Like when you see it there, you know, we put it in the boat and go out and fish. We catch all type of fish. We catch snapper, we catch parrot, grun, barracuda, doctor fish, all type of different, different fishes. Sometimes tourists pass and they take pitch down all them kind of thing. And you, them like when they're knitting in it, sometimes they spend all the day with it. This is my daily living and that's something I enjoy all my life. I don't know if it's work but fishing now. Back in the days, over Bournemouth, they usually do a lot of, export a lot of things over there. You know. We even use our small canoe and go over there to fish through the day. It's just across, across from the other side of the fishing village. St. Thomas is a major growing area for food such as banana, coffee, coconut, sugarcane, and even for fishing. It houses one of the island's natural deep water harbors that was once used as a port for exporting these same food items. Now, we couldn't come to St. Thomas and not mention anything about our national hero, Paul Bogle, or the popular Marant Bay Rebellion. Yeah, the Marant Bay Rebellion took place at the Marant Bay Courthouse with Paul Bogle and his followers marching from Stony Gut to Martinique. Poverty and inequality in the society forced Paul Boga to lead the protest march to this courthouse on October 11, 1865. In a violent confrontation with official forces, nearly 500 people were killed and more were flogged and punished before order was finally restored. On October 24, 1865, Paul Bogle was arrested and executed at this very same spot of land, the Morant Bay Courthouse. And just like that, we've ended our tour in this natural and material beauty, unfolding the stories behind just a few places. If you haven't been here already, then what are you waiting for? Keep we island clean, so clean. From the peaks to the beach, so clean. Not a tea of Jamaica, please don't do it. Keep we island clean, so clean. From the peaks to the beach, so clean. Not a tea of Jamaica, please don't do it. No dash, no paper, no dash, no plastic. Dispose your garbage responsibly. No know how to recycle, learn it quick. And if you drop it, better pick up every piece of it. Plastics last forever, don't forget the bits. Cause when them touch the street, them end up in at the sea. Collect pan the reef where they fish them feed. And when you want seafood, I eat your eat. Keep the island clean, so clean. From the peaks to the beach, so clean. Now the tea of Jamaica, please don't do it. Not a tea of Jamaica, not a tea of Jamaica, not a tea of Jamaica, not a tea of Jamaica.
Thanks for watching another edition of Jamaica Magazine. Join us again tomorrow when we'll do this all over again. Send your feedback on today's show to Jamaica Magazine at jis.gov.jm. Also, follow us on our social media pages. That's Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Download our app on your Apple and Android devices, and you can also visit our website at jis.gov.jm for more information. On behalf of the entire production crew, I am Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.